Hello guys, this is Doran's Movies, and welcome to yet another World of Warcraft class role-playing guide. So, so far I've covered shamans and the warriors, and in this video, I will be covering the warlock. It's, it's been requested by a lot of people, and not even when I started the entire, uh, like, the class thing, like, even before, people always ask questions about the warlocks, because it is a bit of a confusing subject. And also, this video was planned to be out for, a f like, a few days before this, but... Since, you know, my computer broke a bit and I had to fix it, I'm, I'm, it's kind of a bit delayed. So, pretty much as usual, I will explain how the Warlock works and I will give you some insight into their lore so that you have a better understanding of the class. And if you combine that with some of the race guides, you should be on your way to create your own Warlock RP character. Because if you guys don't know, if you haven't watched my channel before, I have covered all of the races, like how to RP every race. So, for example, if you want to be a human Warlock, you can just watch this warlock guide and then just pair it up with the human RP guide and then you should be on your way to make your own character. Then after that I will also give you some warlock race examples on how they are accepted within their societies. So I'm already wasting too much time so without further ado let's just get into it. So the first and the most important thing and the thing that a lot of people confuse is that what is a warlock? Now, I personally know a lot of people who have been playing the game forever and just have no idea how the warlocks work. Even though they might even know some of the lore, they might even know a lot of the lore, they just don't understand the warlocks. And the main reason for that is because it really is poorly presented in the game. It really isn't shown in its full potential in the game or it might be even too overshown in the game. Now, there is also a few things you really need to know, and first off is that warlocks aren't really that common. I mean, there isn't like a warlock on like every corner of the city and in the auction house and everywhere. And it's completely the opposite. I mean, they're really rarely seen, and I'll get into more of that by the end of the video. I'll cover it by the races, but another thing to know is that even if you see a warlock, they can't just walk around the city with their demon out, and in most cases, they would either be imprisoned or even killed on sight. So, let's <laughs> say you're walking like with your demon out, and you have all these fell orbs and chains and spikes and everything, and you're just kind of scanning the people, you would pro probably be killed on sight or just like imprisoned or even attacked by some people. But I'm going to explain that in a second as I'll go through all a few races that are quite opinionated when it comes to the entire warlock thing, so let's say that for the other part of the video. So, a warlock pretty much is a dark spellcaster that utilizes the fell, the demonic magic. He is pretty much the dark version of the arcane spellcaster. Now, just like you have the dark shamans and the, like the shamans, like the positive shamans, here you have the mages and the warlocks, so it's sort of the polar opposite thing. Now, pretty much any class in game isn't the same in the lore, because that way, I mean, the mages and pretty much any spellcaster would be a lot stronger than, for example, warriors and hunters and all of that, because you know, if they could just cast spells all the time, like, the warriors couldn't even reach them at all. But, for example, for a mage in the actual lore, casting a spell isn't the same experience. I mean, in the lore, casting a spell is quite a weird experience, and it actually drains a part of their energy. They kind of feel exhausted after they just cast one spell. While on the other side, <laughs> Warlock is pretty much the same thing, just on, like, steroids, so, like, ten times harder. It's like being a mage in drugs. But being a Warlock is actually pretty hard, as casting spell affects your actual mind and soul, and you have to, like, invest your entire self into being a Warlock. And unless you're really good at it, you can actually lose your mind and fall to corruption. Which is exactly why the entire Warlock thing is so, like, underground and shady. You don't have, like, Warlock trainers, like, in the middle of the city, and you don't have, like, Warlocks walking around. And the entire thing is sort of, like, done in, like, the underground, like, like caves and all sorts of, like, under the bars and everything. So, let's just get a bit into the history. So, in the history, Warlocks have been around pretty much since forever. But only recently did we actually get, like, good Warlocks, like, the positive Warlocks. And still, the majority of the warlocks are actually evil, but the ones that are on our side are pretty much abusing the enemy's power and fighting fire with fire. Now, you're probably wondering how the hell did humans start practicing this outworld, like, demonic magic, because, you know, they're all about the light and everything, and even magic, but the answer is pretty much through very curious people. Now, thousands of years ago, certain humans were taught the ways of the arcane by the elves, and thus today we have a lot of human mages, because... At that point, I believe it was like three or four thousand years ago, during the Troll Wars thing, they sent like, I'm not exactly certain on how many humans, but they sent a certain amount of like, human scholars, and they were taught like the arcane magic by the elves, and thus today like you have a lot of human like mages and everything, because many of them became teachers and like taught other humans. But a lot of these, like these warlocks, like the human warlocks, are actually mages that wanted to dabble into something more powerful and risky, thus becoming warlocks. 
And also humans are very strict with the entire warlock scheme since they worship the light as the main thing and warlocks are pretty much everything they're fighting against which is exactly why all of the warlock stuff happens in hidden underground places as I said and not like in the center of the capital and like the center of cathedral square or something like that. Also it is sort of illegal I guess like it just depends how you define illegal but Varian and the rest of the like the high placed people realized how much of an asset they are and how much destruction they can actually cause against their enemies so they aren't exactly like witch hunting like warlocks they aren't exactly like trying to arrest them and all of that and they're also starting to acknowledge warlocks as a part of the alliance but not nearly enough as the paladins or the priests and the mages and they aren't exactly like respected in the human society let alone like they're pretty much just being barely tolerated and a lot of actual humans don't even tolerate them so it's a pretty weird relationship now on the other side when you look at the horde you have the orcs who are really no strangers to warlocks as they're pretty much the ones who brought it to azeroth during the wars and were the corrupted shamans working for the shadow council now with the new horde that troll formed, orcs look down upon warlocks since they're the reason they fell to corruption in the first place and anything that is demonic is forbidden for the orcs because they don't want to go to that same path again. But troll did kinda acknowledge the warlocks and let a small part of them reside in the cleft of shadow. But now with the entire thing with garage they're still kinda there but the vibe is still sorta the same. Like you can be here but you can't make yourself really known, don't do anything crazy and get people in jeopardy but you can still practice your magics, just kinda do it away from other people. Now on the other races like the races that aren't really that opinionated you, I guess you have the dwarves and the gnomes they're a bit different. The dwarves are pretty much just like the humans while the gnomes are kind of similar to goblins in a way because they're both smart, physically weak, not really religious and they like to take risks in order to gain more power so it won't really be super surprising to see like a goblin or a gnome warlock although Sometimes they might get too power hungry, especially the goblins since they don't really have as much morals as the gnomes and they're also quite greedy and they like to take risks so a goblin warlock is actually more common than the gnome warlock because they always like to get more power. But the two races I would definitely say are warlock friendly are the blood elves and the forsaken and maybe the trolls although trolls have been known for like ages like forever to dabble into dark magics and voodoo. So on the other side for Blood Elves, since the entire Keltas thing and the demons and all of the addiction, they started practicing warlock magics since they're naturally like used to spellcasting and they don't really judge spellcasters that much. Although recently it might be a bit different for the Blood Elves since they're kinda trying to make like a 180 turn and be a bit more positive and kinda do what they did before and not really rely on demons. While the Forsaken on the other hand kinda just don't really care, I mean they're dead, they're known to practice all sorts of forbidden magic like necromancy, making new plagues and all sorts of poisons and who knows what they're making, all sorts of creations and the stuff they make in their labs so they're really no strangers to all sorts of dangerous and forbidden magic. Alright that is all there is for the races, now before I end the video I want to just talk a little bit about the talent trees and the demons as I do in every video. So, as you know, in the game you have three different specs, and that is Demonology, Affliction, and Destruction. And the main one I'm going to talk about is Demonology, as the other ones aren't really that crazy, like RP-wise, like these specs don't really matter, although Demonology is a bit different. While Affliction and Destruction are mainly focusing on casting spells and just using different hexes, while Demonology is the most dangerous one and the most risky one and kinda the most interesting one in my opinion. So what is a demonology warlock and what do demonology warlocks do? So I guess like demonology is pretty self-explanatory, they summon demons, so you need to be really good and a powerful warlock in order to summon any sort of advanced or hard to control demons and a lot of times it happened that a warlock tried to summon something super powerful and it just backfired on him and may maybe even killed him or done something really bad. Much like the Jiraxis for example, like the, that would be a good example, with the tiny gnome trying to summon that, I believe it there was an Eredar, like the giant Eredar and he just killed him. So yeah, it is quite risky. So you're probably asking how does summoning work? Now it's more of a pack thing and it usually requires soul shards that are filled with souls of slain mortals and through like trades you can summon a demon that can serve you. Now warlocks like to see demons in different ways, either as a slave they don't really care about or as a respected helper and that kinda just depends on your roleplay style and your character's personality so you can kinda tweak that and just kinda depending on what your character is that's how he's gonna treat his demon. But there are actually many types of demons you can summon and I will try to give you a list of, of a few. 
So I'm guessing everyone knows the imp, pretty much any warlock can summon the imp, they are usually really easy to control, not that powerful, so they are used quite a lot due to the low risk and they're pretty common. Now medium summoning I guess would be the void walker, who can even follow suicidal tasks and they also hurt anyone who even brushes upon them. Now you also have the fell hunters and the fell guards, who are really not much but just brutes that rely on shield force while Completely opposite side you have the succubus who relies on manipulation and poison and stabbing in the back and everything. Also fail hunters as I mentioned them before, they don't really rely on like sheer forest, they like to just drain the energy from their opponents. I'll, I'll put pictures in the video so you can see what I'm talking about if you don't exactly know who, who is who. Now on the other part you have the tomb guards who are really smart and really strong at the same time. And you also have the dreadsteeds who are this like fiery horse type of a demon. But usually it's not really a great idea to summon them, especially if you're like role playing in Cathedral Square or something like that, like near big settlements or people. Now I guess it's also worth mentioning the Infernals who are aren't really demons but are actually constructs that are extremely powerful, but they're actually pretty brainless and can only follow the simplest of commands, but they also shatter after a certain period of time, like the only upside is that they're really powerful and they can take down multiple opponents. And that is mostly it for the demons, like last thing I would say is that you just need to decide how you want to react to your demons, like your relationship and how you want to treat them as a warlock. And also you need to avoid like having a demon summoned near like a big settlement or next to people as usually it is punishable and you can't just like summon a fell guard or something like that and just walk around like cathedral square or just in the middle of Orgrimmar as it is actually punishable. Alright that is all here for this video, I hope this guide helped you out and I tried to cover as much important information as I could and if you really want to learn more just feel free to ask me in the comment section below or you know you can just do some research yourself I mean on specific things like some good websites would be Wowpedia obviously, Wowwiki, Wow forums and other fan sites. So they're kind of a good source for all sorts of like specific world questions if you want to do like pull off a certain RP style. And thanks a lot for taking the time out of the day to watch this video, just don't forget to like, favorite and subscribe as it really helps out the channel and keeps all these videos going and this entire like roleplaying guide series going as well. And also check out my twitch.tv stream as I'm planning on getting back on a regular schedule soon in a few days and you can also ask me all sorts of questions here. Alright thanks a lot for taking the time out of the day to watch this video and see you next time.